Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with a video about the orchids that I don't grow so well. So there's a couple of different categories in um, this particular video. Most of the orchids that I'm going to show you, I don't grow well because I purchased them before I realized that I don't have the environment for them or the growing um, style, shall we say, for them. And so although they are growing, they are not particularly doing swimmingly. Um, some of them will occasionally bloom, but for the most part, it's just a sea of green. And all I can really expect is new growths and new roots because they don't really have the conditions that's going to induce them to bloom necessarily. The largest group um, are my Cattleyas. So I have a lot less than I used to have. I did not count them before this video, but you can see before you, um, you know, there's a number of them. Some of them have bloomed for me, others have not. Um, some get sheaths. Uh, this one, she got a sheath last year, which she did bloom off of, but uh, so far no signs of a bloom in that sheath yet. Doesn't mean she won't bloom, but uh, so far nothing. And the reason why I think that my Cattleyas struggle is because I don't really get very warm temperatures here in New York. And especially because I grow in my house, they never really get exposed to temperatures above the mid 70s. So it doesn't ever really get truly what you would term hot or, you know, a little bit on the high side of warm. And Cattleyas enjoy the heat. So I don't really take care of that need for them. Uh, so, you know, in the summer, there's a possibility of growing them outside, but um, I just haven't gotten around to like really setting them up for that yet. In addition, because I grow in my home, it's all windowsill growing. Uh, so I don't have a south facing window that I can really put them in. So the best light that I can give them is um, a west facing window that's sort of slightly ish south facing. Um, I guess I can kind of show you what I mean. So sorry, I'll pan around slowly. It is watering day. So all of my orchids are out. Um, so this is my bay window and my living room is a mess because I haven't done that yet this morning. Uh, this is my bay window. As you can see, we have snow on the ground. That window right there, that is south. So that's the window that I put my Cattleyas and my Dendrobiums in. And as you can see, there are some trees. Now there are no leaves on the trees, obviously, because it's winter time now. Um, but they only get light strong light in that window for a couple of hours a day. It's always bright, but they don't actually get strong light um, for many hours. Um, as you can see, I have my humidifier set up because I have forced hot air heat. That's another issue. See my puppies in their little beds being good for now. <laughs> Just give them time. Uh, so yes. So as you can see, um, they do get light, but probably not the correct level for a Cattleya. So although they grow, they do grow. I mean, I, this is this is a new growth from this year. This is a new growth from this year, and it has a little sheath. Um, again, this is a new growth from this year. It has a sheath. Every once in a while, I'll get a bloom on one of these. You know, they do put out growths. They put out, you know, relatively strong growths, I would say. But they're not, you know, really, really happy. So they don't do so well for me. So that's the reason why I, I encourage you to not do what I did. Don't just buy something because you like it. Like when I first started growing back in 2016, um, I started buying orchids because I liked them, not realizing that I didn't have the conditions to make them happy. Another example of this is my Telumnia collection. Part of this, however, is my own laziness. Um, as you can see, the, you know, they are decently sized. Uh, they're, you know, the, they're not as plump and happy as they maybe were when I first started growing them because I was keeping on top of that wet dry cycle that they really like. Um, they like to get a drink and then dry out and then get a drink and then dry out. 
And unfortunately, because of my schedule um, and also my health condition, I don't always have um, that availability to be able to care for them the way that they require. I did actually get one of them to bloom for me last year. Um, as you can see, there's the old spike right there. But since then, no signs of anything. And the new growths are not strong. I mean, they're there, but they're not strong. So I'm trying to be better about watering them and then letting them dry out. I actually do write down <laughs> on my to-do list every week, water telumnias, dump telumnias, <laughs> water telumnias, dump telumnias, so that it will kind of remind me to do it because if I don't, I will completely forget about them. So that's another orchid that doesn't necessarily thrive in my environment. I'm keeping them alive, but they're not doing swimmingly. Also my vandaceous or orchid. So I have couple of vandaceous types. Some are doing better than others. This is my Sensei Blue. This is the Vanda that I've had the longest. I got her probably about six months into growing. So I've had her since 2016. She has never bloomed for me. She did get a spike the first year I had her and it shriveled and died on me. Um, so she don't like me so much. Uh, my cat got to her when I first got her and permanently damaged some of her leaves. So that shocked the orchid a little bit. Um, she, you know, she grows new structures for me, as you can see. I mean, this leaf is huge, um, but she doesn't bloom and she doesn't, I mean, her, her growths are a little, well, actually it's not that bad, but they look a little more flimsy than they actually feel, but she's just never really been happy. I mean, she grew a lot of roots this year. Um, at first I had her in uh, hydroponics I took her out of it and I hung her outside last summer not this summer last summer she didn't really like that um, I was watering her every day you know she was getting those nice hot temperatures but she got a little sunburn um, her leaves that year were very pitiful and undersized so I was like all right this isn't working so I brought her back inside and I put her back into the hydroponics the water culture and her newer structures have improved. But again, improved, but no blooms. Um, I don't know, she's a, she's a puzzle to me. I probably can't make her completely happy because I, I don't have the conditions that she requires. Again, she has a nice healthy root system, uh, nice new leaves, but she's definitely not as happy as she could be. So those are the orchids that I know I don't have the right growing conditions for. And so it's kind of my own fault that they are not happy uh, because they can't give them what they really thrive in. They grow, but they don't thrive. So that's those. Again, please research before you buy something because then you're just wasting your money like I did. Uh, and then these are a few of the orchids that won't bloom for me. <laughs> and I don't know why. Um, there's a few that are struggling. Like for instance, this one, I've had this one less than a year. Um, she went on a downward spiral pretty quickly, lost all her roots. I mean, you can see her leaves are pretty leathery. Doesn't mean it's, you know, curtains for this orchid. I've had plenty of orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids specifically do this to me. Um, you know, especially when I first started growing, they don't really do this anymore. Like I kind of, don't really have this reaction very frequently anymore. So she's puzzling me a little bit why she's so pissed off. Um, but yeah, she so she dumped all her roots. So she's, she's not really hydrating very well. So, you know, she's, we're, we're working on her. Um, this one is actually like really healthy. This, this one grows and grows and grows and grows as you can see. Um, really happy happy orchid I gave it lots and lots of light it got a ton of roots a ton of leaves really happy but has never rebloomed for me and this is one of my first orchids this is um I've had this one since 2016 as well it came with two flower spikes and then it never bloomed again and it's put out leaf after leaf after root after leaf but nope and it's not giving me a flower spike I got it the same time as this one this one's also very puzzling. I got it from the same supplier. Um, she came with two spikes. She grew a cakey on one of her spikes, which is doing rather well, actually. 
And then she went into a downward spiral herself. And I mean, she's not dead, but she's not doing well. These leaves she grew in my care. So, you know, they're decent sized, but a lot of her older leaves turned yellow. Um, she dropped all of her roots practically. So she's not happy. Um, and I, I don't really know why. <laughs> Um, like I said, this one I got the same time as this one. I put them through the same amount of nonsense as I was learning to grow hydroponically. This one did fine. That one did not. Um, and I don't, you know, like I said, she, she has a cakey and the cakey is doing great. So I don't know. Maybe it's just something's wrong with the mother plant. Uh, this is another one. This one I've had actually, this is one of my first orchids that I put into water culture. This one I did back in March of 2016, I believe, is when I put this one into water culture. And I had two of the same orchid, same flower, everything. The other one that I had actually lost every single root, spiraled out of control. I thought it was going to die. It bounced back. It has a beautiful root system right now. And it rebloomed. This one never lost its, its roots never had that much of a problem it, you know it wasn't it did had a couple of roots so it wasn't getting as hydrated as it should but it never had that like panic moment that the other orchid did and it's never rebloomed for me the one that almost died rebloomed for me this one has never come close to death and yet it has never rebloomed for me so i'm not really sure again it's the same orchid same flowers i'm not really sure you know what her problem is <laughs> but she's never rebloomed for me and, you know, that's not the, I mean, I have 30, 39 Phalaenopsis orchids, I think. That was last count. I may have a few more. Um, and most of them have rebloomed for me. So this is the exception to the rule. And, and, you know, they're puzzling to me. And I do, I switch them around. I change them into different windows. You know, I give them less light. I give them more light. And nothing has really seemed to trigger happiness or complete happiness, shall we say. I mean, this guy seems happy. Lots of roots, lots of leaves, but same with this one. No flowers. Uh, this is actually in the category that we just went over across the way there. This is my Neophenicia. So um, I've had this one for at least two years and it's never bloomed for me. I don't know if maybe it's a little too small. I do know that the first year I had it, I didn't realize it's a Neophenicia falcata. Um, I didn't realize that they like a drier winter. So I was watering it like it was, you know, <laughs> regular season for this one. And uh, it didn't lose its roots. It was fine. But um, I have heard that they like a slightly drier winter. So last winter, I did give her a slightly drier winter, but still nothing, still no results. So um, I'm going to give her an even drier winter this winter and see if I can... Um, make her happy. She's, her structures are nice and firm. She has a nice root system, but nope, not, not, you know, other than being green and growing, you know, she grew a little side plant there. Um, no flowers, no signs of spikes, nothing like that. And she grows really slow too. Um, something that doesn't grow slow, but still hasn't bloomed for me is my Maxillaria tenufolia. So this plant is huge at this point. And she needs to be rinsed because she's got a lot of salts build up. But um, she, I, she was five pseudobulbs when I got her. And she has grown, grown, grown. I mean, really, really grown. Lots and lots of pseudobulbs. She seems really happy. Lots and lots of roots, as you can see there. But she has never bloomed for me. And I don't know if they have to get to a certain size. Or again, if I'm just not giving her what she needs. Um, she gets a lot, a lot of light. I put her in a very, very bright spot. And, you know, as the seasons change and the bright spots change, I move her to a brighter spot. Um, so she's always got really, really good light. Um, but she's never bloomed for me. And I got excited this year because there was a growth that started that looked like it might possibly be a flower spike. And I was so excited. And it wasn't. <laughs> it was another new growth, which is the thing. Every pseudobulb seems to put off two new growths at a time. I mean, this plant is growing like a weed. I, you know, when I got her, I was really disappointed because she, like I said, she was only five pseudobulbs and several of those were completely, you know, desiccated by slugs. There were holes in them. I mean, it was a disgusting little plant and I spent a lot of money on her. And I thought, you know, she wasn't going to live through the year. And not only did she live through the year, but you know, she seems pretty 
pretty happy as far as new growths are concerned, but again, no flowers. And I went to um, the orchid show this June and it was at the Planting Fields Arboretum in uh, Glen Cove on Long Island. And um, they also have orchids in their orchid house. So after we went to the show, we went and we looked at the orchids and they had tenufolias in bloom. I was really, really excited because I love coconut. Coconut is like one of the, my favorite things to eat in the whole wide world. So that's why I got her because she's supposed to smell like coconut, but I've never actually smelled one in person. Well, when I went to the orchid show, they had them in bloom and I was able to finally smell one. And yeah, I can't wait for her to bloom. <laughs> I really want her to bloom. If you have pointers, um, please let me know. Um, something that's reblooming that I'm really excited about is my Ranko stylus. Um, last year, I've had them two years. Uh, last year, they did not bloom for me. Um, I have a red one and I have this one. This one's white with like pink spots. And they did not bloom for me. They put out a lot, a lot of new structures, a lot of leaves, a lot of roots. I mean, she is crazy with her roots. <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of root growth, very happy as far as that's concerned, but last year, no spikes. Well, this year she is going to give me a spike. So I am super, super excited about that. Um, and it's growing really quick. A couple of days ago, that was very tight in the leaf joints. Um, and it has grown a significant amount. So really happy about that. This one is actually my favorite. I love the white flowers with the pink spots and, um, the spikes are like amazing with the flowers. There's so many flowers on each spike. So I'm really looking forward to this. So I wanted to share that with you. Good news. I have not injured the spikes on my my mini fowl that's blooming. Her two spikes are still intact and I haven't hurt them. I'm sure I've mentioned to you guys that I am extremely klutzy and I usually break things. New growths are primarily what I break, but occasionally a flower spike has also suffered. Uh, from my clumsiness. And then the last thing I want to share with you is my Saiku Marguerite is finally in bloom. So two videos ago, ago, I shared her with you and she was just in bud. Now she is finally in bloom. Last year, I got one spike with only four flowers. <laughs> so I am over the moon with what she has decided to give me this year. Um, they smell heavenly. They smell like a sweet vanilla cookie just absolutely wonderful just love it so so much so i hope you guys are enjoying this through the video um i don't remember her blooms being this pink last year i kind of feel like they were more white but i'll have to go back at my um to my old video and take a look um but they're very very pink this year like you're not going to see it as clearly as I do. You might see a little tinge of pink there, but they are actually like a really pale pink instead of white. And I remember last year, the four blooms that did show up, they reminded me of popcorn because they were white. So I don't know, a little odd, but I have another spike coming. So I'm really excited about that. And I will share that with you when it comes out. Um, I will also share my two other spikes which are on my um, my wildcat, she's still growing. And then my um, Wilsonara is also still growing. So when that starts to bloom, I will definitely share that with you. So I hope you're all having a great day. If you're up north, I hope you're all very safe. It was a pretty big storm that came through. A lot of people got a lot, a lot, a lot of snow. Here on Long Island, we only got a couple inches, you know, maybe even not even an inch in some areas. But still, it's slippery out there, so be safe, and I will talk to you all next time.